With the new box Fantastic Arc only a few days away, I thought it would be fun to quickly go over the box in terms of what I think has potential and what I think can be skipped overall. Starting with Burning Abyss, easily the highlight arc type of the set, I think the deck has a lot of potential but won't do all that much in our current landscape. All of the main deck monsters share the same ability to special summon themselves from hand if you control no spell or traps, and also do something when sent to grave, though you can't use both effects on the same turn. This wave gave us Skarm, who searches a level 3 Dark Fiend in the end phase, Seer, who special summons a Burning Abyss from grave, Farfa, who banishes a monster on field until the end phase, Alec, who negates a face-up monster's effects that turn, and Rubik, who has no additional effects but is a tuner. We also got Dante, their star rank 3, who can detach one to mill up to three and gain 500 attack for each milled for the turn, swaps the defense when it attacks, and recycles a Burning Abyss on destruction, and Virgil, their level 6 sinker who can discard a Burning Abyss to shuffle a card from the opponent's field or grave into the deck and lets you draw one on his destruction. While Dante is undoubtedly one of the best rank 3s we've ever gotten, and Virgil is solid, their issues lie in the fact that we don't have many good rank 3s for the deck to work with at the moment. This might change in the near future, as we're set to get Yuto in about a month, so there is a chance that Burning Abyss is going to get way stronger with the addition of Phantom Knight cards, but for the time being, this is purely speculation. If you're going to go for them, go ahead and shoot for 2-3 Dante, 1-2 Virgil, and 3 of all of the remaining monsters. Yang Xing is one of the other major highlighted archetypes here. All of the Yang Xing share a floating effect to summon a Yang Xing from deck on destruction, with the tuners having swarming effects and the non-tuners being able to synchro summon on the opponent's turn, giving their synchros bonus effects. This includes the tuners Xiao Tu, able to discard two Yang Xing cards to summon a zero attack and zero defense Yang Xing from deck, and Chu Wen, able to summon itself from grave when a Yang Xing is destroyed, banishing itself when it leaves the field, and the non-tuners Tao Tai, who can make the synchro unable to be control swapped, Suwani, who gives the Synchro 500 attack and defense, Bixie, who makes the Synchro immune to traps, and Pulau, who makes the Synchro immune to spells. Their boss monster, Baxia, is a powerful board clear both by shuffling away targets on summon and popping targets after the fact, providing grave recursion too. Your primary way into this will be Zhao Tu, quickly filling the board with three materials to make Baxia. The only spell and trap for them worth noting here is Creation, which turn your floating effects into two floats, but locks you into synchros. While Yang Xing will have a minor presence with Baxia, the issue primarily lies in their floating effects themselves. All the Yang Xing floating effects are when you can, meaning that if the pop is not the last thing to happen in the effect chain, it will miss timing and not activate. Yang Xing has the potential to rise up, but I feel it won't do much in the current meta. If you're gonna go for them, go ahead and shoot for 2 Baxia, 3 Xiao Tu, 2 Creation, and 3 of the rest. Pendulums undoubtedly have some of the most interesting support here, though not all of it is interconnected, so we're gonna be jumping around a lot. Starting with Odd Eyes, the cover card, Odd Eyes Arc Pendulum Dragon, is absolutely amazing for any deck running Sky Iris. It is a searchable scale 8, gives you a free summon if on the field when you use your Sky Iris search, and is a level 7 for Exceed plays. Spiral Flame Strike can either be a pop if you control an Odd Eyes, or a Recycler or Searcher for any Odd Eyes monster you need, making it yet another Searcher for the deck. Finally, Odd Eyes Fusion is a fusion spell that lets you use monsters from the extra deck if your opponent has two or more monsters and you control none, that is searchable with Sky Iris. This support feels great for Odd Eyes decks, even better with some of the other Pendulum support here, giving the deck some legs now. Ratios are a bit up in the air for the time being, but you can't go wrong with grabbing 2-3 to three of Arc Pendulum, 2-3 to three of Spiral Flame Strike, and 1 Odd Eyes Fusion as a holdover until we get a better Odd Eyes Fusion monster. I'm more unsure about the Spiral Flame Strike than I am about the others, mainly because the deck is able to hit a point of too much Odd Eyes Search Power to run all of it at max. Master Pendulum the Draco Slayer and Dinoster Power the Mighty Draco Slayer are less impactful now, but give us a glimpse of what is coming in the near future. Any further Draco Slayer support will make these two necessary in those decks, so it's best to get a couple of each for future support if you're going into the box. Finally, Pendulum Call is easily the best card in the box. A discard one to search your full scales is perfect for any Pendulum deck, and there's already a searchable Scale 1 and Scale 8 in the form of Dragon Pit and Dragon Pulse, meaning that the card is almost an instant staple in current Pendulum builds. Easily a 3 of if you're going for it. Some quick other card highlights and mentions. Buster Dragon and Destruction Sword Memories are great for Buster Blader decks, but the deck lacks the ability to put both Buster Dragon and the Buster Blader Fusion on board together consistently on turn 1. This could be workshopped in the future into something decent, but for now seems pretty lackluster. Evil Swarm Nightmare is a great rank 4 tool, but only for dark decks, limiting its reach currently. It will see play in Destiny Hero and Abyss Actors, but it is unclear how pivotal it will be. 
The Magic Specters are the new low rarity archetype in this box, though it's missing almost all of its good support. If you're going into the box for something else, you might as well grab three of each, but unlikely they'll be meta anytime soon without their boss monster, which honestly probably won't even be brought to Duel Links because it's too good. The ninjas here are also decent and hold potential, but probably won't do much in the current meta. Finally, Magical Abductor is a great generic pendulum card, able to search for any pendulum monster after three spell activations, but will be held back almost entirely by Duel Links' hand size at the start of the duel, not allowing her to go off consistently enough to warrant running. Overall, the set has a lot of potential in the competitive landscape, though it's unclear how well it will perform. Burning Abyss has decent potential, and Yang Xing does too, but both have pretty clear drawbacks for the current meta. Pendulums are in a much better position with this box, but still have clear downsides for their mechanic in general. If you're interested in Pendulums, Burning Abyss, or Yang Xing, I'd say the box is pretty worthwhile to go into. It's easily the most interesting box we've received so far this era. Thank you all for watching to the end of the video. I understand this particular format is a bit different from what I've done up until now, so I'd love to hear your feedback in the comments below. And while you're down there, be sure to like and subscribe for more content like this and the history of Duel Links, and follow me on Twitter for various updates on future content, plus whatever's going on at the time. Thank you all again, and I'll see you next time.